In this segment of Therapy in a Nutshell, we're going to talk about what you can do if you're worried that someone you care about is having suicidal thoughts. I once made this post on Facebook about how most deaths by guns are suicide or domestic violence. And someone else commented on my post like, why bother trying to stop people from committing suicide? Because they're just going to find another way to do it. And the reality is that that is not true. Most suicide is impulsive and most suicides can be prevented by removing easy access to suicide. So by, by taking away guns or by taking away Tylenol or by preventing people from having easy access to means to take their lives. So uh, an interesting example of this is from England in the 1930s and 40s. Back then they were using this coal gas to heat their ovens and it was a simple way to commit suicide. You just stick your head in the oven, turn the gas on, don't turn on the pilot light and you'll just go to sleep. And when they changed the type of gas in ovens in England to like a natural gas, uh, suicides decreased massively. And this, this shows us that a lot of people take their lives when it's easy. If they're delayed or prevented from taking their lives, then later on they can get the help they need and actually live very happy and fulfilling lives. So learning how to stop people from committing suicide is an essential tool that everyone should have. Most people don't get a lot of education on how to prevent suicides and, and help someone who is suicidal. So in this segment we're going to talk about how to help if a person you care about is suicidal. The topic of suicide is a difficult one for many people. It's scary to think about and many people just don't know how to respond if the person they care about talks about suicide or if you wonder that they're having thoughts of suicide. But with a little education you can become much more comfortable broaching the subject, knowing what to ask and knowing when to take action to keep them safe. Research shows that if someone who is suicidal can be prevented from immediately acting that later they often get feeling better and they no longer feel suicidal and they're grateful that they're alive. Suicide is overwhelmingly an impulsive act. One study of suicide survivors said that only 13% reported thinking about committing suicide for 8 hours or longer. 70% said they thought about it for less than an hour and a whopping 24% said the idea had occurred to them less than 5 minutes before their attempt. Your job is to make it difficult for them, to slow them down and give them alternatives. And you can really make a difference in people's lives. When someone is depressed, suicide is a very real danger. It's important to know the warning signs. These include talking about suicide, talking about dying or harming oneself, or a preoccupation with death, expressing feelings of hopelessness or self-hate, acting in dangerous or self-destructive ways, getting their affairs in order and saying goodbye, anger, rage, or wanting revenge, seeking out pills, weapons, or other lethal objects, a sudden sense of calm after a depression, or giving away their possessions. Many factors contribute to someone's decision to take their life, but some common circumstances that make someone at higher risk include relationship problems, problems with substance abuse, a recent or upcoming crisis, recent job loss, crime, and physical health problems. And here are some risk factors, meaning things that statistically make a suicide attempt more likely. Impulsivity. Elderly or teenagers are at a higher risk mental illness, having access to a means like pills, drugs, or firearms, having experienced a recent loss, a recent suicide at their school, or a recent breakup of a relationship, previous suicide attempts. Females tend to have more suicide attempts. Males tend to choose more lethal methods. Substance abuse and substance use. The first thing to know is you can reach out for help. Contact a mental health professional or call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. They can give you advice on how to support the person you care about. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is at 1-800-273-TALK. The Lifeline staff can refer you to resources in your community. And Lifeline has trained counselors available 24-7. To find the support groups outside the U.S., go to Befrienders Worldwide. In addition to reaching out to the National Helpline, you can also support them in a couple of important ways. Don't be afraid to ask them about it. 
talk about it. Research shows that talking with someone about suicide is not going to encourage them to do it. As parents, we want our kids to talk to us about what's going on for them, but we don't realize how sometimes the way we respond shuts down that communication. So, for example, in this little comic, the young man says, I'm feeling depressed lately, and the parent is really dismissive. Oh, don't be silly. You have everything in the world going on for you. And a little bit later, the mom's saying to the kid, how come you don't tell me anything? So again, going back to that empathic listening is really an essential tool if we want to help our children or family members when they're struggling. Now, here's a couple things that you can say that might be helpful. I'm sorry you're feeling so bad. I'm glad you told me. I want to know. I can handle it. How can I help? We'll get through this together. Tell me more. Let's keep you safe. Let's find someone who can help. And some things not to say. That's crazy. Don't be so dramatic. That's an awful thing to say. You're making too much of it. That boy, exam, friend, grade isn't worth killing yourself over. That's not going to solve anything. You're just trying to get attention. You're not going to kill yourself. Even if it seems like their suicide attempt is a cry for attention, then it probably is. They're desperately asking for help and connection with a problem that they don't know how to solve. Ask them directly if they have suicidal thoughts or plans. If they say yes, they need to see a mental health professional. You can continue to support them, listen to them, and be kind to them, but you need to insist that they see a professional. You could tell them, I care enough about you that I have to do something. Either you tell someone and take care of this, or I will call someone to help you. If they refuse, start to include other people. Talk to their parents, school counselors, church leaders, let their therapist know about their behaviors. Try to get as many people involved as necessary. If there is an imminent risk, like if they have a plan or they have a means, meaning that they have a way to kill themselves, or if you have a deep sense that something is deeply wrong or there are other warning signs, then you need to make sure they get help immediately. This is the time to break their trust if they asked you not to tell anyone. One of my close family members' life was saved because a friend broke her confidence and told our parents. And we're all so grateful that her friend did that. In this situation, your actions could be the difference between life and death. So err on the side of caution. Ask them about suicidal thoughts. Be a good listener and friend. Encourage or force them to get help. Delay them, impede them, take away their means, like their keys, guns, medications, etc. Another thing you should know as a parent is to be very cautious about taking away their cell phone. Statistically, this is linked to suicide attempts, and it also removes their access to their social support network. Reach out to resources or do anything you can to help them, even if it makes them mad or makes things worse in the short term, or even if it costs you your friendship. Saving their life is more important. And while we as helpers can't stop every suicide, we can have an impact and prevent many of them. I'm attaching links to a couple of resources. Feel free to check them out if you want to know more. This video is an excerpt from my intensive course on how to help when someone you care about is depressed. This course has over 40 videos with specific skills that you can develop to be more helpful for the person you love. It includes how to help them open up and ways to help if they won't talk, what to do if they're suicidal, and specific strategies for managing your role. It includes helpful things you can say or do. If you're interested in watching the whole course, check it out on Udemy.com.